am Josie Chang Order at CU Boulder. And I'm Tim Podkel at SRI International. And today what we're going to do is talk about practical measures and how to get started thinking about creating talkback boards. First, Tim's going to explain what practical measures are, and then I'm going to go over some examples of how we've designed talkback boards with our library partners. Thanks, Josie. Practical measures are really indicators that are easy to collect, make sense to collect on the desired time frame of the change cycle you're implementing, and ideally are measures that can be collected by others interested in measuring the exact same phenomena. You want to be able to have these replicated in different areas. Some of the major key features of practical measures include that the measures need to be designed specifically for the goals that you have that align with the program's intended aim. You want the practical measures to include language and a topic that is meaningful to the library staff and participants working and benefiting from the programming. The measures need to be uh, easily changed or adapted as the design cycle continues, and these can be collected in all contexts where measurement needs to be taken. So if you have programming that happens in different libraries within the same county, for example, you want to be able to have these measures work and be able to be collected in all the different settings, independent of the context. The data collection phase of the practical measures work cannot be too burdensome for the participants, and it's meant to be carried out in the context of daily routines and practices. So simple things like at times when people enter the room or exit the room, if there's a natural transition time between activities or students are asked to log into a computer and they're already in, to a system and there's a place where data could be collected. Those are all parts of daily routines and practices with the programming. Finally, the data produced by the practical measures has to be meaningful to practitioners and provide information that they can use to improve their practice. Uh, unlike many other um, compliance measures, practical measures really need to be collected in the context of what are you going to do with them? You need to be able to answer a question of what you're going to do with the data before you collect it to ensure that the, all the data is necessary for a change to be implemented. Talkback boards are one kind of practical measure. And there are a couple different, of, couple different ways our library partners have done these. One is with sticky dot prompts, which is a version of what we're calling closed-ended prompts for data collection. Um, another is open-ended responses, allowing students to fill in with either a sticky note or write on a sheet of paper what it is their reaction is to the certain prompt. Today we're going to talk more in depth about creating prompts for the sticky dot close-ended version of the TalkBack board. So in our last video, we looked at the outcomes and indicators that our Multnomah partnered library was interested in evaluating. Lindsay wanted to understand if program participants are increasing their interest in the topic of the program, and one way she thought she would see this is if they demonstrated curiosity. For the TalkBack board then, we wanted to provide a range of possible things that Multnomah Library patrons might say about curiosity. I am more curious about things I wasn't interested in before. I got bored with the thing I was doing, so I looked for something else to do. I couldn't figure out how to do something different, so I kept doing the same thing. I really love doing the same thing all the time. I just want to do something different and I can't explain why. So now we have a variety of options for youth to choose from. For Anything Library in Thornton, Colorado, we designed our TalkBack board prompts from two main ideas. One was connected learning principles, which Mimi Ito talked about in the first video in this series. From this, we're looking at the concept of interest powered or interest discovery, where youth experience a program or a space as giving them opportunities to discover interests that they didn't know they had, and then the things that they do in the space afterwards are relevant to those interests. The second idea was related to homago or hanging out, messing around, or geeking out. And here, what we're thinking about is understanding where youth make choices about their interest development or deepening their interests. This is also related to the idea of leveling up. In this talk back board for anything, you can see that we have both of those ideas at play, that we have interest discovery and also the idea of leveling up, that people are deepening their interests. So this talk back board says, next time I want to do the exact same activity I did today, make something similar to what I did today, but harder, try something completely different, or this was a one-time experience. These are just a few examples of prompts we've worked with our partners to come up with. 
But we also want to talk about further ideas for designing prompts based on what you think you might see in your own programmer space. These are some questions that you might ask yourself. What would you see participants doing when things are going well? What would you see program participants doing when things are going poorly? And really, what is the range of behaviors that you might expect to see in a space or during a program? And then to create these prompts, to create prompts from these ideas, think about how you might write these as questions a participant could answer, as well as what are the possible answers you think a participant might actually give you. For today's video, our library partners talked about how they put together their talkback boards. Now, talkback boards are amazing because what they do is they allow customers to really interact with the information and give a really quick response that's very genuine. That's also at the same time very guided, uh, allowing us to really understand what their needs are, what their motivations are, and what we're doing and what we could do better. So I guess I'm just going to talk about a program that we had recently that was a STEAM program. And at the end of it, um, instead of handing out the surveys, we did a talkback board where um, the kids lined up and uh, we were asking them questions like, did you learn something today? Did you do something you want to pursue? And I feel with the talkback board, the, the output that you're getting uh, feels truer. You're, when, you're, when you're verbalizing them to reflect upon a thing in a general way, they're able to really uh, begin to think about, you could see the kids really thinking about, did I learn something today? And they're reflecting upon what new things that I do. And I feel like it reinforces a lot of the things that I just come over because when you're asking them whether or not they learned something, um, they really do want to think about it. They really want to see whether or not um, they did. And most kids answered yes, but some answered no. And I feel like you're getting a truer uh, reflection of the kind of measurements that you want to do. And while one talk backboard is not going to measure anything, just as one set of surveys won't measure anything, over time, you can begin to see where the different clusters in the talk backboard are constantly arriving. Is it low in learning things, but is it high in the fun factor? Or uh, whatever the measurables that you want to do, you can find them using the talk backboard. Do you want to learn uh, do you want to know why uh, people are not coming back to the library? You can use a talkback board and you can have different elements saying the library is too dirty, the library parking lot is too full. You can have various elements and you can kind of track over time, um, you know, various things that you want to know about the patron uh, population and to how best serve them. Um, and so I feel like that's, that's one of the things that I really like about the talkback board is that um, you can you can reconfigure you can figure out what it is that you want to find out and then over time I feel like you will get answers that are pretty closely reflecting uh, the truth. One thing that we have learned across various instances of talk backboards is that framing is very important. Though it is important to understand what didn't work well, any negative framing can unintentionally leave the patrons feeling like they had a negative experience even when they did not. Note the last choice for the talk backboard previous, in the previous example from Anything. This was a one-time experience. That's a neutral framing for what could otherwise be understood to be negative, such as, I didn't like the program. One aspect of our work is to develop a database of these talk back prompts. Check back for a link to see some of the prompts we have curated, and please be sure to share your talk backboard ideas there as well. Next time, we'll look at examples of open-ended talk backboards and talk about how to interpret data from both types. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.